Okay, let's look at problem number five. I'll read it to you. A 1500 kilogram car traveling at 10 meters per second suddenly runs out of gas while approaching the valley shown in the figure to the left. The alert driver immediately puts the car in neutral so that it will roll. What will be the car's speed as it coasts into the gas station on the other side of the valley? So what's happening here in the picture? You have a car on top. It's going at a certain speed at 10 meters per second and then you know, it runs out of gas, so there's going to be no more power, so it's just going to be coasting. And then it goes down the hill, up the hill, and ends up getting to this gas station. We, don't, we want to know how fast it's going when it gets to the gas station. And to do this, we can look at the, the um, conservation of energy. The kinetic energy plus the potential energy at the beginning are going to have to be the kinetic energy and the potential energy at the end. And the only potential energy that we have involved here is going to be the gravitational potential energy, which is mass times gravity times the height. And the kinetic energy, of course, is 1 half mv squared. And so we know the potential energy here and here. We can calculate it because we have the mass of the car, we know what g is, and we know how high each location is. And additionally, we know the kinetic energy at the beginning because we know the, the velocity. And so what we want to know is the velocity at the end, so we can figure that out. Really, I should be saying the speed because we know how fast. This is, this is really the speed because it doesn't tell you the direction. But regardless, uh, we know three of these, and we can figure out the other one, this one. And so we can just set this up. Um, one half mv initial squared plus mgh initial is equal to 1 half mb final squared plus mgh final. I'm looking for this, so I'll subtract this guy to the left. 1 half mbi squared plus mg. And when I subtract this one, I'm going to factor out mg, and I'm going to have hi minus hf. equals one half mv final squared. And so you'll notice that this is initial minus final, which is going to be, um, it's kind of like the negative of the change in height. So this is actually the negative change in height. But you can just plug it in and think, and not have to complicate things. And actually, uh, one more thing is that, well, okay, so I'm trying to get rid of this half in the m, I'm going to multiply everything by 2, and I'm going to divide everything by m. The m's cancel out. Multiplying everything by 2, I get vi squared plus 2g hi minus hf is equal to vf squared, and we just take a square root of the entire thing. So the final velocity is equal to the square root of the initial velocity squared, and plus 2g hi minus hf, which you can rewrite as a minus sign here, 2g change in height. So what's going on there is it's the initial velocity, and then this is sort of taking the part of how much energy was taken up by going up slightly. Even though we go down and then back up, you're losing energy by ending up at a higher place. And the reason, um, well, so that's the reason why you end up with a negative here that's taking away some of your speed. So you're going to have, you're going to be going slower when you're up here. And that's kind of intuitive. All right, let's put some numbers to it. Initial velocity, 10. Use the square root, 10. Square that. Minus 2 times 9.81 times, I'm using the minus, so my change in height is up 5, 5. So you have 1.37. Rounds to the 1.38 meters per second, which of course will round to 1.4, which is what we have for our answer. All right, done.